me, Stormy, and here's your 2018 yearly horoscope, and I love this year for you. I cannot wait to get in here and talk about this, but first and foremost, the 2018 birthday appointments are up, and yours is going to be coming very quickly, so you want to click in the description box down below, Aquarius, grab your spots before they're gone, because your birthday is at the beginning of the calendar year. You will be, these will be some of the first appointments to book out, so make sure you click down there and grab it. All right, Aquarius, this year. First of all, let's talk about Saturn in Capricorn. Saturn in Capricorn for you sits in the 12th house space. Now, Saturn comes to crystallize lessons, to help us get mastery over things. Saturn wants us to spiritually mature and come to the next level, come to the next place, right? So for you, all year long, I really feel like in this 12th house space, you're going to be conquering some fears. You're going to be identifying some fears. You're also going to be working on some things behind the scenes right? There's just the potential here in your 12th house zone to bring together every piece of you, what you've learned, what you've experienced, gain closure on it, and also step into some faith because this is going to be a year where you're bringing some things out of hiding. You've got some goals that you've been working on for the last couple years, and I think that this is the time where you actually get to see some of them coming true. So, don't think that the Saturn energy isn't going to be heavy, isn't going to have you addressing some things probably from your past, some things that you unconscious, subconsciously have going on in that 12th house space, but it may also help you activate and access some creativity that you will absolutely need this year to help get a project off the ground. And I say that you're absolutely going to need it because we've won got eclipses this year, and they're very similar to the eclipses that we experienced in 2017, being that they are in both Leo and Aquarius. So this hits your sign and your relationships. But this eclipse cycle is actually connected to one that we started in 2016. So those things you've been working with for two years and working on have the chance to actually come and form into something beautiful this year. As well, we've got Mars going retrograde in your sign, and this can make you feel stuck, defeated, deflated, like, oh my gosh, this is not moving. Why isn't this working? So you've got a lot of energies that you're going to need the stamina from that 12th house working that you'll be working on. Um, to move these things forward. Now, some of the most brilliant energy, I think, of your year also comes from the fact that Jupiter is in Scorpio. And for you, this sits in the 10th house. This is career stuff. This is why I say that thing you've been shooting for, or wanting to do, or make some kind of career venture or your soul level calling, make that a permanent space in your life. You have cosmic support to get that done. I feel like this is where Jupiter really shows up and brings abundance and wisdom and blessings and support and even protection to you all through the year up until November 8th. November 8th, Jupiter is going to move into the sign of Sagittarius. So this is going to change space. Then we're going to get social, which is great because if you start something, get a new reputation, get a promotion, whatever it is around the career space, then you're going to need to spread that word like wildfire as we get to the next couple years. But let's do 2018 first, right? Now with Jupiter here, I think that you can definitely anticipate either starting a new business, getting that promotion, advancing at work in some way, or because there is eclipse energy happening right from the beginning of the year in Leo, we have January 31st, we've got a lunar eclipse happening in Leo, and this is in the relationship zone, and you may choose to end some kind of relationship, and it could very much so be professionally. You could say, I don't want to be in this partnership anymore, I need to own my own company, right? This could be romantically where this relationship is stifling me. You could have an ending to relationships happening here. Then on February 15th, we've got a solar eclipse and that's in your sign. This is a new beginning for team Aquarius, right? You could be like, I need to be able to do this. I want to present myself to the world this way. It is a brand new coming out energy for you. Now, the nice part about this is that this is a year where I think you really see your choices, your conscious choosing on fleek, despite the fact that Saturn's back here in Capricorn in a quiet, unconscious space. You are choosing a reality in front of you, but you know it now, and you're willing and able to work with it. So if in some way, shape, or form, there is a personal connection, a tight relationship, something that used to be close that you shed this year, understand that it's for your greatest good and you will likely be the one who chooses to let that go. But either way, relationships will be in shift and in flux this year and that's totally okay. 
Now Uranus is also going to be making this move out of Aries into the sign of Taurus. We're going to get a little taste of Uranus in Taurus before it retrogrades, moves back to Aries, and then comes back forward again in 2019 for a much longer stay in Taurus. But What's going to happen here is that Uranus brings excitement, he brings new, he brings innovation, he brings creativity, he brings, he gets you unstuck from where you were. And with Uranus moving into Taurus, this is in your fourth house space. So I'm telling you, from May 15th until November 6th, something in your domestic zone, home, family, real estate, property, your mom, women in your life, your foundational ideas that you're building a life on, these things are going to be surprised or shaken up or ruffled a little bit because Uranus comes to break down structures. The structure around your home may not be working at this time. And so he's got to shake that up and get you a new set of ideas because it's about innovation. It's about inventing and creating something new that is good for everyone right? You have to remember Uranus being your ruling planet is very friendly and all inclusive oriented. So your security around home could change a little bit. Now with this Mars retrograde that's happening June 26th until August 27th, this will be making a connection to this Uranian energy. So this really could be a time where something stressful comes up in your home family property zone, that fourth house space. But what I think is helpful about Uranus is that he's helping you see different ways to get around them and to solve these issues. But the major changes at home, I think that while they may be startling at first, you'll know how to handle and to navigate those things, okay? Now, when we do get also into that Mars retrograde, I always suggest during a Mars retrograde, if you can avoid elective procedures or just jumping into a new contract, those are the best. Because Mars right now, what he's trying to help you do is relook at your strategy, right? Relook at your action, relook at what actually needs to be done um, in order for this to be helpful. Now, as along the lines of the surgery, I say don't do that because Mars is also over warlike things and cutting and the surgeon cutting you. That's like war. So if you can avoid that at that time, it's the best. But for your projects, for your life, for your home life, you have to relook at the strategy and the actions that you're taking and the energy even that you're bringing to a space so that you can bring something that produces something, produces a higher level alignment and vibration for what you want so that you can manifest something good here, create something good here. Now we've also got at that time um, of this Mars retrograde as well, we've got another lunar eclipse that's happening in your sign July 27th um, because it too is at a rougher angle to Uranus. Um, this is again where I say that you showing up in this home zone, there could be stress, but you're feeling innovative, you're feeling creative and all of that good stuff. Now, I feel like we've just got to get in here, Aquarius, and break this month down by date because it's just such a good year for career and for family and for relationships and for you really grabbing this by the balls and making some decisions that are best for Team Aquarius and watching this thing you've been working on unfold that I just want to get you in there. All right, beginning of the year, January 31st, we have got a total lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Leo. So this is relationships. It's important to understand that it's total because it means it's blotting out or resetting your emotions. So you may be really rethinking a relationship here. And this is the full moon. So it says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So you may be making a very significant change over the next six months in terms of your relationship zones, whether that's romantic, friendship, business, personal, wherever it's at, wherever you have consciously chosen to have these people, places, and things in your life, they will be shifting. February 15th, we've got the solar eclipse happening in your sign, planting those seeds of new beginning, right? Planting those seeds of intention. You don't know what you're going to look like as you put yourself out there, but you're going to make some decisions that, that suit where you're trying to go, that are for your truth, that are for the truth of your plan, for where you're trying to go. And this will also include making decisions, again, about who and what is not showing up for Team Aquarius. This is about getting those right alignments to make your dreams come true. May 15th, Uranus moving into Taurus here all the way until November 6th, where it slips back into Aries before it moves forward. But here we get this, this light up, this unexpected, this excitement, this spontaneity around the fourth house zone, home, family, real estate, property. You could be taking on something stressful, but you'll know how to navigate your way through it. You really, truly will. But you may not just be able to think your way through it. You may have to get a little bit quiet with Saturn and Capricorn to feel your way through it as well. Not your strongest suit, Aquarius, but totally doable. Now, when we get to June 26th, August 27th, we've got that Mars retrograde. Avoid the electric surgeries. Electric, elective surgery. 
surgeries if you can find an alternate way to handle that situation also relook at your strategies you've got going on july 13th we've got a solar eclipse and this one's happening in cancer i like this this is a new opportunity for you in career home or um, not home but daily schedules daily routines and also in health so this is a brand new beginning and it's about bringing it home it's about creating comfort and nurturing this area of your life so you'll have that energy to work with for several several weeks up to months july 27th lunar eclipse happening in aquarius this means something about you has to be ended acknowledged or adjusted how are you moving what decisions are you making and are you ready to just shed are you done with being afraid of, of taking on some things? Are you done hiding in some way, shape, or form, and you're ready to launch yourself out there? Or are you already out there and it's time to move to that next level? This may be a wonderful energy for helping you see that, yes, indeed, it is time to keep it trucking. And it's also going to be a very inventive time for you as well, because like I said, you've got these other issues and uh, troubles that could be coming up or challenges, and you're going to be stepping up to them much more creatively. As we get to August 11th, we've got a partial solar eclipse in Leo. This could actually be a new relationship or a revival to a relationship that you have and remember this can be business or personal october 5th through november 6th we've got venus in retrograde starting out in scorpio in your 10th house you're going to look at where there's harmony you're going to look at the finances around that sliding back into libra in your ninth house do you need to gain a skill do you need a license do you need a certification venus gets tight right? She gets tight because she needs to show you where the disharmony is or where the gap needs to be filled. So if this is a tight time, just know that this may be where you are re- looking at those things because it is a retrograde. And I also think ninth house too. This is coming to me. Ninth house. If at this time, October to November, if you have anything about foreign countries in your world, you may be re-looking at that. I will tell you, if you have stuff happening with visas, passports, immigration in any way, shape, or form in your world, this could be a time that those definitely come under some stress. And as we end this year, November 8th, we see Jupiter moving home into a comfortable sign of Sagittarius. This is moving into your 11th house space. You will start to have an abundance of friends networking, social things come into your life. You've been working all year to get this dream off the ground. It's people that will help to make that dream come true. So you'll get the opportunity at the end of the year to start welcoming them in with open arms and knowing that they are not crap friends. Jupiter doesn't bring crap friends. It brings good stuff, good quality, blessed friendships into your life and ends the ones that don't need to be there anymore. All right, Aquarius, like this video, comment, share, subscribe, click in the description box, grab your birthday appointment, because I'm telling you, you guys are coming up first, so those ones will book out first. I love you guys. Bye.